Okay, first thing I see here is so many digits around this little corner that I've got to consider the Fistimethel ring. All right, and what I'm going to do here is block off these little blocks All right here, boom, and now we got set of quotas theory going on here. Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this puzzle, Spicy Touch, by Florian Wortman. I'm going to use set equivalence theory to do it. Click on the link below you. I try the puzzle yourself. With that, it's solving time. So I saw this puzzle in CTC Discord. I started messing around with it, and I saw there's a, 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 a traditional way of solving this, but then I looked and said, hey, there's actually there's a great way to solve this puzzle using set. So set equivalence theory. I have a whole playlist on this. Hope you're familiar with that. But the idea here, this is called the Fist of a Fell Ring. Basically, these 16 purple squares contain the digits 1 through, uh, well, could contain the digits 1 through 9. But they are equivalent to these four blocks of four on the outside. And I've done a previous puzzle before where I've proved how you can do that. I'll put a link at the end. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that right now. Just trust me, these. 16 digits will match these 16 digits out here. So, what can we do with that knowledge? What you probably notice is that what's inside the purple? It's just one, two, threes, fours, and fives. And there's four blank cells, right? So, what are the givens in the yellow? Well, there's six, seven, eight, nine. So, what we know is that the digits six, seven, eight, nine have to be each, one each in the, these areas. And so we can get rid of that six there because of this six. We can get rid of the seven right there because uh, that's seven. We can get rid of the eight right there, and we can get rid of the nine right there. Now, I will tell you, I did a puzzle before by Jovial, and it had a similar setup, and there's a little trick right here. So I'm going to show you a huge Sudoku shortcut to make some leeway and some progress in this puzzle because you kind of go around looking for digits to solve, it's a little tough. Since we know that one of these has to be a 6, one has to be a 7, one has to be 8, one has to be a 9, they're all feeding into this space right here, right? So we know 6, 7, 8, 9 is looking. Well, what's inside block 5? The square is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4 inside. 6, 7, 8, 9, we know are looking in on that. This has to be a 5. This cell right here has to be a 5. Great. Um, so that's something that set can tell you because we know there has to be one of each here. Now, the other part of set that's going to help us with this puzzle is you got these 12 unknowns out here, but you but you have 12 known in here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what we can do is we know these have to be the digits 1, 2, 3, or 5 by set. So we can fill those in. All right, now let's start taking away, you know, take away all the fives right there. Take away the threes right here. Take away the twos right here. And we can take away the ones right there. And now you're looking at this going, okay, Timberlake, that really didn't help much. What, what are you trying to do here? Okay, after we, we did the five, we filled in all these spots. What is remaining right here? Well, it's not can't be one, two, three, four, five. It's got to be six, seven, eight, nine. So let's get rid of that seven right there. Let's get rid of this eight. Let's get rid of this nine. And let's get rid of the six. You see how those are flowing in? Well, that helps us, right? So six, seven, eight, nine in the five. So this is a naked quad of six, seven, eight, nine at that five. That means this is one, two, three, or four. Well, you see the one and two right here? We know this has to be a three or a four. Since this is a 3 or a 4, this is going to have to be a 1 or a 2 right here. Okay, that's going to help us. The same thing here. you got the naked quad, 6, 7, 8, 9 right there. So this has to be 1, 2, 3, or 4. But you got a 1 and 4 right here. So this is a 2, 3. And this would be a 1, 4 because of the 2 and the 3 right there. Nice. Okay, now this is how we're going to make progress and start solving more cells in this puzzle. Look at this. One, now you have a naked quint, right? One, two, three, four, five are those five spots. 
in row 8. Huh? Very cool, huh? And so once you do that, you know with the 7, you know this has to be 6, 8, or 9. It has to be. 6, 8, or 9, that can't be a 6. This is going to be the key to solving this puzzle. Same thing here with this 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You know that these have to be, you got the 6 array, 7, 8, 9. You can get rid of the 8 here, and you can get rid of the 9 there. Where can a 5 go now here in block 6? You got the 5 coming up, the 5 cutting across. These can't be a 5, and that can no longer be a 5. Your 5's got to be right there. See how that works? All right, so using set equivalence theory, we're able to solve this 5 right there, and that's going to be key. That's going to be a key to getting this puzzle solved. Same thing here. We still got these... You can still work with the naked quints, right? There's five cutting across there. It has to limit the digits, one, two, three, or five, within of those spots. So this has, to, and you got a nine, so this has to be six, seven, eight. Let's put in that six, seven, eight. Uh, you can get rid of the eight right there, and you can get rid of the seven right there. And then let's look right here. You got, whoop, let me show you. One, two, three, four, five. Those are naked quints, again. And so we got an 8 in there array, so this has to be a 6, 7, 9. And there are only three digits left. We know this can't be the 7, and this can't be a 6. Hopefully I marked all that right. So we got the key here. We got this, we already marked two 5s, and now we're going to be able to make some more progress with the puzzle here. Okay, so 5, 5, five got to be in one of those spots. Five can't be here. So where can a five be across row three? There only be a one other spot. It has to be right there. Now we can eliminate this five. We got two fives here. And then we're going to look and see, well, five now, where can it be in block eight? It's got to be in one of these two spots here, right? So it's a pointy pair of fives. This can no longer be a five. And so where can the five be. It can't be in any part in column 2 now, right? This is a 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. The only place left for 5 has got to be right there now. There. So now we've solved uh, a lot of the 5s. you got two spots for a 5 left up here. So again, it's going to be another pointing pair of 5s. And this is going to help us uh, eliminate this 5 here. And if you look at the naked quint, where can a 5 be? It's only going to be in this spot. So there we'll solve another 5. Cool. I love this. Let's look at the 9s. 9, 9, only one place now left for a 9 here in block 1. So we can solve that 9. And then this now has to be a 6. And we can get rid of this 6. What else can we do? All right, every time we solve something, you kind of want to look around and go, what else can we do with that? One, three, four, one, three, four. Now this has to be a six or seven, and so you can limit the six and seven right there because this is a naked pair. So that's got to be a nine now. All right, nine and a nine. Only one place left for a nine in block seven, which makes this an eight and this a seven, and we got our four on the edge. Now we can get rid of all these fours, and we can get rid of this four, and now you got a three four here, and then looking at this naked quint. One, two, three, get rid of that four. Four, four, we're going to four be up here in block three. It's got to be right there. So we get rid of this four. And where are we at? Four and a four. Four's got to be one of those two spots. Uh, so we can't solve that uh, just, just yet. But we're getting close. All right, what do we got here? Where can a nine be here in column eight? The nine can only be right there and we also already solved that seven anyway so here's your eight and you see how the, the puzzle's just starting to fall apart okay so this is going to be a six seven you see the six right here so there's your seven and this is going to be your six and you see six nine eight i can tell you this cell has to be a seven but you can also prove it by looking at these two spots because of set right we only had one of each of those digits we know that so we can solve it pretty easily great Let's finish up here. We got a six, uh, eight, seven, six. Kind of get rid of some of this marking that we 
worked so hard to achieve. And uh, now it's a six and a nine. This is going to be your eight, and this is going to be, it looks like a three. All right, get rid of these threes. Gives us a two, four. Uh, I got seven. Get rid of that seven here. Oops. There we go. And get rid of that nine right there. So you got a six, eight across the top. So you can get rid of the eight. And you can get rid of the six. So now you have a seven, nine naked pair. That makes sense. We got a full house here. So we might as well finish this full house. And so you might be wondering, okay, if I didn't do set, how could I solve this puzzle? Um, try it on your own. Tell me what you I, I can tell you what the traditional way is to solve this. Uh, I'm not going to give it away. I will tell you the break-in is to be able to figure out that that's a five. Once you figure out that's a five, the rest of this is pretty similar to what I'm doing now with set. But I will not give it away. I'll give you a hint, though. It's a strategy I've used many a times on this channel. All right, what we got here? Uh, we got an eight right here. That's a nine. That's an eight. And we got a six right here. Keep on moving. One, two, three, four. What do we got left? It looks like a five and a nine. I got my nine right there. So this has got to be your five. That's your nine. Let's come back up here and solve that for a five. And this is going to be your seven. Okay. Getting real close. And now you're looking at this going, well, Timberlake, we should be able to solve the rest of this puzzle, right? Because we've got this nine here. This is a seven. That's a nine. That's a seven. Uh, can we do the six, eight? Yeah, we sure can. This is your six. This is your eight. But you're going to see here real soon um, that we're going to get stuck. We're going to get a little stuck. Uh, so I won't give it away yet, but let's look here. Three. What we got here? We got a six. Okay. Can we do any more solves or eliminations? Yeah, we can get rid of this three right there. And we can get rid of this three right here. So that's got to be your three. Okay, so we got a one, two, one, two, two, four, two, four. What about up here? I want to make sure I get rid of all the possibilities. That can't be a three anymore. One, three, four. Can we eliminate more on the one, three, four across the top? No, nope, we got a one, two, two. Okay, so how do we finish the rest of this? One, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the set colors because we don't need them anymore. We filled in all those blocks and trust me uh, we're kind of getting away from the set piece now anyway okay so we got two things we can do here you might notice is that we have all by value cells except for this cell right here row two column two every other cell remaining is a by value cell so there's a trick and it's called uh, bug plus one by by value universal grave plus one if you see this pattern the shortcut, and again, I'm giving you the second shortcut today, is that you can look from this cell and go across the house. Either way, you can go up, down, or within the block. And whatever whatever candidate you see three times, that's what you can solve this cell for. If you can't solve that the one three times, then you would you'd end up having, uh, well, one, it's wrong, but two, it would give you like uh, technically like multiple solutions for the puzzle. So the quick and easy way to do this is I can look right here and go, there's one, two, three ones. It's like there's three ones across row two, three ones down column two. That's a one. And once you solve this for one, everything else falls apart real quick. But you're like, hey, Timberlake, that ain't cool. Can you solve this puzzle for real logically? Uh, that's a real quick shortcut. Yeah, and the answer is yes. You can also do, and the easiest solve I saw from here is an XY wing. Okay, so look right here. Here's your pivot, two, four. Here's the pincher, one, four, and a one, two. So if this is a two, that's a one. If this is a four, that's a one. So any cell of these two C, you can eliminate a one. So we can eliminate the one from right here. That has to be a two. Okay, so there. I just wanted to make sure I held to my promise to always solve things logically, explain how I did it. So there we did. There we go. All right, so once you solve this for a two, let's finish the rest of this puzzle. That's a one. That's a two. That's a four. That's a one. That's a four. That's a two. That's a one. That's a two. That's a four. All righty. And then we got this is a one. This is going to be your two. That's going to be your three. That's going to be your one, like I said before, and that's going to be your three. 
If you're still a little confused about SET, then check out this other video and tutorial where I'll explain in depth how the system of cell ring works. Thank you so much, Florian Wortman, for letting me feature your puzzle on this channel. Uh, you're an awesome setter, and I love it. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. Thank you so much for watching.